You're listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all-new Never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network, Blue Raven Network. was complex. Well, the world of 1945 was complex. The world of 2016 is intensely complex. You'll be dealing with terrorists. You'll be dealing with hybrid armies. You'll be dealing with little green men. You're going to be dealing with tribes. You'll be dealing with national leaders and local leaders. You'll be dealing with politics and economics. You'll be dealing with direct fire and indirect fire. And you're going to be dealing with it all. And it's all going to be dealt with simultaneously. Seven twenty sixteen Scott Hensler Ten Foil Hat Club. Well, I tell you, elections are just around the corner. November eighth. I've been busy trying to help two friends that are running for office here in Idaho. I did their commercials for them for radio, and trying to get them posted and available to those stations that are throughout Idaho, so they people can hear. And it's been busy, along with the deliverances, answering the emails, the phone calls, and, you know, the the business as usual with broken hearts, torment from demons, torment from psychotronics, gang stalking. And so I just have to assume that we're in a torture chamber called America. There's no reason that any of this should be happening, but it is. There are ways out. There there are ways to take care of business, but yet it continues. You know, and, and just the very fact of thinking Hillary could ever be president and is, is just absolutely torture in itself, and I'm not a Trump supporter by any means, but, you know, as I mentioned before, it's basically two evils. And, you know, then we've got Putin, nuclear war. You know, this whole thing is staged using ISIS being that of the Mossad, Israel, CIA, America, just as has always been planned with Albert Pike and using Islam for bringing in World War III. The very torture of bank collapsing, you know, the economy itself, many people are out of work, uh, you know, holding two jobs or if you can't even find a job. These are perilous times, and unfortunately we haven't seen anything yet. Now, of course, the question is, is Obama actually going to leave office? Well, we know they're going to do something. They're going to, you know, make a move that virtually is going to change the the world, the life of everyone. And whether, you know, Obama is in office or not, it's going to be somebody. 
And so this will be very interesting. Now, there is divine intervention. There are things that no matter what this, you know, black nobility, the reptilian seed of Satan wants to do, God is in control. And never forget that. Okay? So, torture. Well, Torture comes in many ways. Many of you are in relationships that are absolute torture. You try and leave the relationship, and the pain and suffering is actually worse than being in the relationship, and it actually drives you back. This is very typical of the demonic realm when you have an ungodly soul tie with an individual. Most likely there was some type of uh, interaction prior to the relationship as such as, you know, sex outside of marriage, fornication. And with that bond that was not intended by God, then the stage is set for control, control by the demons, control by the entities that, that hate the very nature of who you are. Now, torture is a Latin word, tortus or tortas, which basically means twisted, an action, a practice, a punishment, trying to bring compliancy, trying to bring self-gratification in such an action. You can actually torture yourself. You know, you, there's just every kind of sick, twisted behavior out there that you can imagine. And it can be physical. It can be psychological. And as we know with spirits that come in torment, it can be spiritual. Now, torment, torture, is sanctioned by individuals, groups, states, countries. It's been around since ancient times. Uh, in my opinion, it's pre-Adamic. This is something that has been around for forever. It's just not just ancient times. And torture can be of a few minutes, a few hours, days, and even years. Some people are absolutely in torment with anxieties and fear and depression their whole life. Some right out of the womb, their whole life is nothing but torment, torture. And this is why we have such a high suicide rate. Now, when someone's in that lifestyle, it's not by choice, but it is by curse. Now, that's not what this is about tonight. I want to focus on gang stalking and all the methods that have been used against the citizens of the United States of America, not the United States, but the United States of America, the people. And it's interesting that, you know, different countries that have supposedly come together as the United Nations, which is nothing more than a Luciferian agenda for universalism to to implement one world government that's what it is one world order that um, that the classification that in the classification classification of torture it must be known that one is actually inflicting it all right again for punishment revenge political re-education, deterrence, interrogation, coercion, trauma-based mind control, that of Monarch, MK Ultra, sadistic gratification, sadistic, you know, just in its nature, it's all sadistic anyways. The very fact of inflicting harm onto another human being is the first thing from, from godliness. Now, there is the ability to protect yourself, if you are going to protect yourself at all costs, you are going to, to inflict damage onto another person, but that's not torment. That's not torture. <clears throat> that is a casualty. That is a action of one's behavior that then has consequences. There's a difference. And the thing with liberals, you know, you guys that are liberals, you know, you, you've, you're demon-possessed. You're, you're basically, you've got your brains in backwards because you can't comprehend that. You can't separate the two. And that makes you a dangerous individual. That puts the rest of us in harm's way because of your inability to discern evil for what it really is. Okay? 
So killing not necessarily is the goal, but it certainly does happen when torture is applied. Uh, again, it may not be the goal, but it certainly does happen. Injury may not necessarily be intended. Well, that's kind of weird, but we look at waterboarding, okay? So the infliction of injury is actually upon the spirit, actually upon the psychic of the individual. So it's, it's a torture of the mind. And does it, in, does it uh, inflict injury? Absolutely. It also, when you commit such a thing, that it is an open door for spirits, Again, this is part of trauma-based mind control. <clears throat> but, you know, the whenever you have, you know, post-traumatic stress, for instance, whenever you have a, a cause and effect that, that can be overwhelming to a, to a you know, person's mind, that mind can fragment. That mind can then, you know, go into another state. There can be chemical imbalances from it. It can be brought in by fear, fear of death, uh, the witnessing of the destruction of somebody else, via, you know, whether it's a car accident or whether somebody was beat to death, maybe, you know, it was a loved one. This is an overwhelmingness that can literally cause the mind to fragment. Now, I want to also talk a little bit about capital punishment. Now, the guillotine has been used for years. There's been different ways of beheading, you know, with a sword, a guillotine. Uh, the electric chair, you know, I've talked even about that. There was even demonstrations between the difference of AC current versus DC current. Both of them have the same end result if that is the type of power that you're going to use. Gas chambers. Now, <clears throat> humane capital punishment, certainly gas chambers are not part of that, <clears throat> being humane. Now, if you're familiar with gas chambers, this neural infliction that takes place is absolute torture and punishment. The lungs can fill up, you know, with fluid. The person can literally suffocate on that, but the neural damage one of the tests that they do on, on uh, gas chambers prior to executing an inmate, you know, like in the federal penitentiaries and state pens, is that they would put a rabbit in there to test it, and there would be witness to it to verify that the chamber is working. And then, of course, the fumes that are in there have to be exhausted out, and there has to be tests to, make, to be made to make sure that it's not a, a bad environment for the guards to go back into or the doctor to pronounce death. But I can remember as I did you know, the search on that years ago, one of the inmates who took a nice deep breath said, Hey, warden, it smells like rotten eggs. And then immediately that was inflicted upon him. So that's actually torture. I would not consider that um, to be something you know that that should be done hanging is another now when the judge pronounces hanging he will say hanging until dead there's also a case of half hanging which is torture meaning that there's not enough to to snap the neck because that's what it's all about and so the half hanging then would maybe be done in a slow action. And I want to point out that Calvary or the military, you know, they've actually got a manual on how to hang the, because you've got body types, you've got weight, uh, male versus female. So they've actually got charts and graphs descri describing in their manuals the proper way to hang. And the whole idea is to, to make it as quick as possible. Now, the turn of, from 1800 to 1900, Tucson, Arizona, there was a woman who weighed over 300 pounds who was hanged publicly in Tucson. And apparently they didn't follow these graphs and charts, and her head was ripped off of her. And so hanging was outlawed in Arizona from that point forward. That was a time of Arizona territory, including New Mexico. And, of course, she got firing squads. And one of the things about firing squads is that the person who's actually, you know, the, the, the uh, ones firing the weapons, 
that in reality what they do is they'll load the weapons up. Now, we're talking about a military firing squad. We're not talking about things in other countries where it's just go for it. That only one or two would actually have bullets. The others would have blanks. And so instead of tormenting the executioners, they, the, you wouldn't know who actually you know, fired the, the bullet that killed them. You know, as bizarre as that is. And, of course, drowning is another method. We saw this with Salem, Massachusetts. Now, that is torment. That is torture. That, that you know, is absolute insanity. And, of course, fire, you know, that's another way of torturing. And, I, and, I'm, and I'll change here in a little bit, so just bear with me. I know that some of this is hard to hear. Because, see, what, they, what they've been doing here with lethal injection is that they've been botching it intentionally. Okay, it's not rocket science. It's easy to do. I mean, you can take a, a you know a, a dog that's gone to a point where he's suffering and you, euthanize. You know, even euthanasia is even legalized in certain states. Oregon, a nurse can actually perform it. That's where we are in the scale of humanity. And they've done this in, on, intentionally because what they really want to do is they want to come all the way back around and bring the guillotines back. Georgia was the first one to want to implement the guillotines. So they were botching the lethal injection intentionally so they could start altering and changing the laws and methods. Now, of course, you know, there's, you know, Islam, throat cutting, beheading. You know, that's a form of torture because it's not quick, it's not fast. You have a person who suffers for a period of time. That's a form of t torture. Now, <clears throat> What's taking place when all this happens? Now, there's two things. One, you can have spirits come in, and obviously when a person dies, you can have spirits that leave. So the executioner, if it's uh, not sanctioned in a law, that, it, that the executioner himself can actually retain the spirits from the person who's dying, the executioner can actually transfer spirits to somebody, if it, or I should say the, the torturer can actually transfer spirits to an individual, but they can also receive them. And the other two is those people who are witnessing. So let's say that you have those who witness the gas chamber, those who would witness lethal injection, those who would witness the electric chair that if these individuals had open doors, that the criminal that died, if, they, you know, let's say they were a psychopath and they had committed many murders, then as the demons leave them, that the people who are there to witness them, believe me, the demons would find somebody real fast to go into. And so there are, I'm, I will guarantee you that there are many people who were witnesses to that that had breakdowns because it was so overwhelming to them to actually see a human being die that they simply wrote it off as being post-traumatic stress, but in reality they, they received demons and it was too much for them. So they're a little more careful about that. What's interesting with electric chair, that in Arizona only a licensed electrician can actually perform the electrocution. And there was one case where they actually had to do it three times until the doctor pronounced them dead. And I don't know if you've ever seen an electrocution. I have, not personally, but certainly by, by video. Um, and it's, it's about as bad as it gets. It's very bad. And so someone in that state, their mind most likely is gone, <clears throat> but it is, in my opinion, a form of torture. Okay? So when torture and this type of action is being done, it is an abomination and so, therefore, it is a legal right for spirits to transfer. And this is what happens. Now, another form of torture can be to actually torture somebody in front of somebody else. <clears throat> so you can have a loved one, you know, husband and wives in other countries, children, uh, and as bad as that is, it, it takes place. They may want to just do it because they enjoy the suffering. They may be doing it to try and get them to... Uh, reveal certain things. The CIA, unfortunately, is very good at this. Now, I, 
I actually know a woman. I don't even know if she's alive anymore. This was back in the 80s. She was a Vietnamese woman. And she had these horrible marks that went 360 degrees around her neck, these spots, these holes, these marks. And she was actually kept in a bamboo cage by the Vietnamese, by the Viet Cong. And they, the bamboos were actually shoved into her neck, so she had spikes that were at her neck. And if she were to move one way or another, she would be pierced. And while she was in this cage, they actually... Um, beheaded her husband so they tortured and they executed and so this is the mental status of those individuals over there that regardless of it being wartime or not this is unacceptable so this woman unfortunately it was so many years ago that I was not in the deliverance ministry then I don't know whatever happened to her but I'm sure that this woman um the the amount of anguish and, and the bad dreams and the nightmares and the reliving and the post-traumatic stress that her life was vir- virtually torture, okay? And unfortunately, this takes place all over the world. This This has been going on for a very, very long time. And so there has been the energy that has been expended, that has been broadcasted from such actions, And what that generally means is that the demonic behind it basically gets fed. The legal rights, because of innocent blood being spilt, is then the the areas that the blood is spilt onto then is turned over to the demonic one, over to the fallen angels, usually on ley lines or some area that uh, can be used as a porthole or stargate open uh, into the spirit. And, of course, to curse the land in general. Now, everyone involved, since Satan, you know, Lucifer, the demons, do not play fair, that even the people who are innocent can receive demons from such an action. Now, it's interesting that international law prohibits such a thing. Okay? Most domestic laws in, of countries prohibit it, but, but it still takes place. So it's really just a matter of them trying to portray it out to the public that, you know, like the United States, and I'll get into that here in a minute, that, you know, we're such a great country that we'd never do such a thing, but that is not the case at all. And I will explain that here in a minute. The CIA, the military, uh, for instance, Guantanamo Bay, waterboarding. Now, that's only one form of the torture. There's starvation. There's humiliation. There's all kinds of things, uh, you know, being exposed to the element for, for extreme heat. Yuma, Arizona, for instance, the prisons there, the, you know, that, that territory prison that was there, virtually they would put the prisoners in these small uh, stone cages or even steel cages. And I don't know if you're familiar with Yuma, but the humidity and the heat in itself is absolutely dramatic to where these, that's one of the worst tortures I think you could ever uh, endure. And, of course, injection. Now, what do I mean by that as far as torture? Well, you know, LSD. We know that um, that was used by the CIA to torture individuals, even military personnel and U.S. citizens for lengths of time to where they virtually went insane or couldn't come back. And so whether it was through ingestion or injection, that the tortures that can come from that are absolutely unbelievable, even insect bites, okay, like that cow killer that uh, the video that I have on um, Tinfoil Hat Club website that, uh, you know, if, if you were to have that insect, you could, you know, place it on somebody who's bound up, and that would in itself would be absolute torture. And again, the post-traumatic stress that would come from it uh, the fracturing, the the abomination of you know crimes against the innocent individual, then the demonic stronghold and legal right that takes place, unfortunately, is taking place all over the world. Now, again, whether it's electrical, chemical, those things you know that uh, can be used, 
they, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with with um, uh, chemicals to be used for uh, lobotomies. Lobotomies can come in different ways. And what that means is, you know, they, they were using ice picks to literally go behind the eyelid and drive it into the frontal lobe, which would cause, you know, the, the results of lobotomy. Basically, a person's emotions and will are stolen from them along with memories and everything else. But it can also be done chemically. It can be done electrically. And in my opinion, it's a form of torture that should have never been allowed in this country. But unfortunately, it did. The 50s and 60s and even into the 70s, that brutal practice was, was practiced. Even one of the Kennedy uh, gals was had a lobotomy. And I'm sure the reason they did that is that she probably couldn't keep her mouth shut, and that was how they did shut her up. Now, Article 5 of the U.N., Universal Declaration of Human Rights is supposedly forbidding any of these actions to take place. Now, you've heard of the Geneva Convention. Unfortunately, that didn't take place until 1949, a little late for the U.S. soldiers of the Bataan Death March, a little late for the German people in the death camps. You know, Holocaust, there, there's a lot more to that story. And so there was a massive elimination of Germans that basically were through starvation after the war, forced into labor camps, and there were 4 million of them, with a result of over 1.3 million plus that died, that were German citizens and even some of the soldiers that took place even after the war. Now, Winston Churchill of Britain, Franklin Delano Roosevelt of the United States were the main implementers of this. So you need to understand that the Holocaust, what you're hearing is a program, is a, is a basically a PSYOP, civil engineering, mind control, and yes, there were atrocities that took place. Yes, there were horrible things that took place, but, but you need to understand that many of the photographs that you see of the starving individuals, those were actually German, German people. All right? <clears throat> this is why General Patton was murdered, to keep him from reaching the U.S. to reveal it to the news and to the world of what was taking place. So this was genocide. Genocide through torture, starvation, being open to the elements. You know, the German, Germany can get very cold, and so there were many people that uh, froze to death, hypothermia, starvation, sickness, dehydration, and then just, just their own will. Okay, these were individuals after the war. So thank you, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and, and by the way, Roosevelt <clears throat> and, again, Winston Churchill, they all share the same bloodline. They're all from Satan's seed. They are of the reptilian bloodline. And this is why they were capable of doing s such a thing. All right, so, so the question here now after hearing all this is why is the world turning a blind eye to what is taking place here in the United States. Now, what I mean is cell phones. Now, we're talking about the World Health Association, World Health uh, groups that, you know, generally for disease control and whether humanity is, is carried out, uh, whether something that is potentially dangerous to individuals is outlawed or not allowed into certain countries that cell phones, smart meters, Wi-Fi, radio towers, satellites, even aircraft that, that have different uh, apparatuses of, of uh, uh, bringing harm onto people, including drones, that um, why are these things allowed? Why are they being used in America and around the world on U.S. citizens? This includes parked cars outside of residence. Okay, uh, occupation of offices, even apartments is, so they can set up their microwave, their ELF radio transmitters, and point it into either someone's house, 
someone's office to inflict harm and torture onto other people. <clears throat> so, again, since the so-called government does not have the best interest of humanity with people in mind, this is why they're allowing this to happen. And, of course, you know, many of the effects are Y2K voice-to-skull technology, as I've talked about psychotronics. And psychotronics can come in many forms, uh, or many applications for torture, for pain compliant, mind control, uh, injecting thoughts, subtracting thoughts, putting false memories, doing just about everything uh, that, uh, that demons can do. And unfortunately, this even takes place with our military troops. Okay, now I don't know how many are familiar with tunnel rats. They, they were um, a specialized group of Viet, uh, soldiers during the Vietnam War. And generally, the, the smaller they were, the better, because they were able to fit into the tunnels that the Viet Cong just literally had like ant uh, beds, you know, how ants can burrow in everywhere and certain rodents can burrow in everywhere. And this was the, the main defense that the Viet Cong had against, you know, the, the people of France, because the France was in there before us, the United States and the British and other countries that were invi involved in all this. And so, so basically, these soldiers were handpicked. They, they were trained, and they would go into these tunnels. Now, you can imagine the, the, the absolute terror of going into a closed space having absolutely no idea what's in there, only to your imagination uh, that whether it would be a female Viet Cong uh, with a knife, glass, uh, venomous snake, uh, handgun, bamboo, to, to basically kill our soldiers, and we lost many of them. So my point in this is that the v V2K, the voice-to-skull technology, was actually developed and ready to go that when the troops went in, they, they actually used this technology. It wasn't known publicly. This was top secret. And the, the, the point here is that when the war was over and these men came back, they still heard voices. They still were the guinea pigs. They still were uh, subject to the ELF, the microwave, the V2K, the voice-to-skull technology, the psychotronics. So this continued after the war. Many of these individuals ended in suicide, insanity, uh, not just the typical post-traumatic stress that came from Vietnam, but a whole other level. And my heart goes out to these individuals, especially the families. And, and uh, this, this is crimes, not just crimes against humanity, but this is an infliction onto the American people, the soldiers who uphold the... Um, the safety, the well-being of the United States. Now, I'm not talking about the Pentagon. I'm not talking about, you know, how they're used to do other things. That I myself, you know, I come from that time. Uh, I enlisted, but uh, the war virtually ended when I was there to sign the papers, and I'm not kidding. I can remember this guy that wasn't even five foot tall, but he had these two massive um, military men that were standing, you know, I guess the MPs you call them, and he literally screamed out at us, you know, all right, war's over with, you suckers, turn around and go home. And so I did. So I didn't join. Now, on top of this, to, to add insult to injury, that the technology of the psychotronics, they are now duplicating the same behavior of demons. So they're causing torture into the individuals who are the subject matters of this program called Psychotronics, V2K, that they already know demons because this is fallen angel technology. They're familiar with the spirit realm, they're those who have been part of all this to, to develop it. And so now... I, when someone comes in, I have to make a, a determination whether I'm dealing with someone who's actually dealing with psychotronics that are mimicking demons, synthetic demons, synthesized 
demons, or is it the real deal? Now, what I've been finding is actually both, because the crimes against them, the torment against them, the post-traumatic stress, the, the abomination, then is it, it is a, an abuse, and whenever there's abuse, then you have legal rights for spirits to come in. And so this is a new dawn, a new day of trying to weed through this ending times of technology that's here to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, along with the synthetic demons, of course, are hearing voices, sickness, anger, depression, fear, all also brought on by gang stalking. And Berkeley, over there in California, is where this was all developed. This is where it was uh, brought into a refinement that then by taking people much like those who are ho homeless and weeding through them on which ones would be willing to, to do the dirty deed, and they're trained with their cell phones and other devices to gang stalk, to read, uh, you know, to, to map people's brains, and to just be part of the harassment system. Now, many of them do not understand what they're doing. Many of them aren't quite, you know, connected with society and literally think that they're doing good. But unfortunately, at the other end are U.S. citizens, mostly, mostly what I've been finding uh, is single women, women who are widows, women maybe have never been married, especially those in a little older age group. Now, some are married, and there's always a military connection. There's always something that shows that, uh, the, you know, whether it's uh, the intelligence agencies, you know, CIA of this type, something ties them together. Their name was drawn from a hat. They have the information on them because of the association to whoever was in the military with the backgrounds and the security uh, clearances that then they have the stats on the individual run through the computer and then they were selected. Do you understand that? That's why some of you who are being harassed who cannot understand this, you meet certain criteria by the computer that this is why it's being implemented on you. Now, of course, the whole goal is to eventually do this to everyone. Okay, This is part of the pain compliance that whenever they want to round everyone up or do whatever they're going to do, that once this is released, so this is test beds, this is how they're determining what works on who. All right? <clears throat> So basically, this is all forms of torture, both physical, both emotional, spiritual. Many people, unfortunately, you're hearing about the high suicide rates of the military. Um, that is because this technology is being used on them. Do you understand that? And our heart just literally goes out to them, and this is why my door is open for anyone who's in the military that wishes to come see me. So again, this is not just, you know, crimes against humanity because, you know, as the military separates a citizen from those who are in the military, this is crimes against everybody. So this is medieval, this is evil modified to to today's technology. Now, in reality, it's old technology because we talked about pre-Adamic races then I can assure you that this is, this is just another go-around. This has all been done before. I believe that this was even exercised in uh, Egypt. I believe that the helmets of the Roman soldiers, part of them were part of having a shield to keep the mind from being in, uh, under the influence of radio wave. How effective, I don't know. Uh, th this is referred to as Faraday shields. Okay, hence the term tinfoil hat. That's what that was all about. There is some lividity to that, but in, in reality, that depending on which way the radio wave comes in, because the tinfoil hat that's made into a bowl can act like a parabolic and actually make things worse. So you can actually end up focusing the radio wave into certain parts of the brain and not, you know, you know putting a suppression, Okay. So how are they getting away with this? The people who are doing this, uh, who are they, right? And why are they doing it? 
Well, they're getting away with it basically because of apathy. The disconnection of the normal person, even one who claims to be in Christ, those who were in the Christian churches and so forth. But we also have brainwashing that this is just the way it is. Many of the generations that are coming up today really don't know any better anyways. You know, when I'm driving around, and all of you see this too, you see kids, you know, teenagers walk along the road, their face is always in an iPhone, a smartphone. Uh, and in fact, injury rates, accident rates are increasing because people are walking, stepping off the curb, you know, walking in front of cars, falling, stumbling over things because their face is in to the phone. So accident rates are actually increasing. So in reality, you know, with the smartphone and all the technology and everything else, the brainwashing, this is a matrix of deception. So this is why they're able to get away with it. So people need to wake up. They need to understand what's truly going on and no longer allow this psyop to continue. Who are they? Well, they're psychopaths. They are evil. They are, this is implemented by fallen angels. This is by the, the reptilian demon seed, the Illuminati, the seed of Satan. So all of these people are psychopaths. All of these are demon-possessed. All of them are the depths of Satan. They are of their father, the devil. And you need to comprehend just how bad they are. Okay? Now, I don't know if, if any of you remember, geez, what was the name of that movie? Um, Dr uh, gremlins now in the movies when you see them that they were inflicting torture and pain onto people they were laughing and cheering and everything else and when one gremlin would even fall into let's say a blender or something else the other gremlins would laugh about it so you understand they really have no love even for each other they are you know when you look at an alligator when you look at a snake or something they don't have any compassion. There's no reasoning. Do you understand that? So they're basically in that same line. And so the mortality rate of even their own is acceptable. So why would anyone do such a thing? Well, again, they get pleasure out of this. This is basically their, their way of, of achieving satisfaction. Another one, of course, is to control. You know, cattle prods, I don't know if you're familiar with them, you know, they're basically a stun gun, a high-voltage device, you know, to herd cattle and everything else. Uh, I, I don't, you know, that I personally don't believe that should be used, but they do use it. And, you know, part of this control is also for experimentation to see what works. Now, we are creatures of habit. You know, many of the psycholo psychological books, uh, the things of, of psychology, are because we are creatures of habit. And then you can have abnormal psychology. And so with, it, with that, then, you know, we are basically guinea pigs. We are test beds for them, which has been going on for a very, very long time. And, of course, the ultimate goal is genocide. But in that, they need to keep a certain amount of uh, people alive because we are food for them. We are finger food. Do you understand that? Our blood, our tissue. And then again, for the experiments, for them to, uh, again, uh, you know, part of cloning, keeping the DNA, using it for whatever means, slavery, okay? In fact, uh, if you get a chance, one of the last broadcasts from Tex Mars, uh, he, he does a great show on there with a guest that uh, has written a recent book on white slavery, it was, it's more pronounced, was more prominent in America than you ever could imagine, in Europe as well. And the, the Slavic, or slave, basically meant white. So, believe me, with, with slavery today, with human trafficking, sex trafficking, that in itself is a form of torture, which is taking place here in America. Now, again, with the application of this, we have chemtrails, radio waves, again, gang stalking, GMOs, vaccines, and with this, causing sickness. So that's a form of pain compliant because you're not able to basically stand and fight. 
Now, with this bringing mental fatigue, mental illness, that brings in hopelessness, the inability to fight, the inability to reason, to, to rally together. This is, this is you know, one of the many forms that has been used through the years to keep somebody in a bondage where they're not even able to fight. Now, fear in itself is another tool, obviously. Many people are not standing up because of the fear of retaliation, the tyranny of this so-called government, which the Declaration tells us, the Declaration of Independence tells us to throw them off, to even take them out, to stop them. That tyranny in itself is torture. Okay, it's a pain compliance to bring fear. Fear is torture because when you are in fear, you will do things you would not normally do. So it's literally business as usual. Okay, And when I say business as usual, that even though those so-called Christians or whoever I talk to that does not believe that this is what's really taking place, I turn around and come back to my office and do more calls. Okay, do more, deal with more walk-ins, more emails, more deliverances over the phone. Okay, dealing with real spirits. And again, being forced to have to separate them from the synthetic demons. And unfortunately, as I mentioned, that is increasing. Now, along with this, I want everyone to understand that when you go through a traumatic incident such as divorce, rejection, abandonment, unfortunately children with divorce and maybe a parent dies or, or there is a complete abandonment, that the broken heart is one of the most horrible things that an individual can go through. For instance, one of the first soldiers that was killed during Desert Storm I believe that the funeral took place in Tucson, Arizona, that the mother who was dealing with the death of her son literally died at the funeral. And we know that she literally died from a broken heart. So this is how um, torturous a broken heart is. Now, with the... You know, if a person hasn't been delivered, the demons that are basically tormenting, which, you, you know, the very la loss, the hopelessness, the understanding and, and the loss of never seeing the one that you care for, the one that you love, that in and itself being tortured, that the demons who are um, willing to do whatever it takes, that are opportunists, they use that opportunity to cause more. So, again, heart attacks, a heart failure in itself, even emotional, mental, complete breakdowns, unfortunately, a part of a broken heart. So if you have a broken heart in these times and you're being gang-stalked, you're being tormented, you're being tortured by radio waves, these things are absolutely magnified beyond comprehension. So unfortunately, I've been dealing a lot more with that. There's a lot of relationships that have broken up in the past month which is a, a terrible situation. And, you know, marriages, uh, husbands being thrown out, husbands leaving wives, you know, children, parents, ending the relationship, knowing, you know, that, that uh, they don't want to continue. That in itself is, a, is, a, is trauma, which does bring, bring post-traumatic stress. And th this is a long-term situation that can take time. Now, in this situation brings fear because of unknowing, the hopelessness, uh, the, the inability to, to rationalize this. Why does it happen? What can I do? Is it my fault? All of the stuff that goes through people's minds is absolute torment and torture. Okay? Now, that is excruciating. That, that is a, a beyond comprehension that if you are dealing with a broken heart, that again, this brings a, a fearful situation of hopelessness. And so again, please, please understand um, that, that joy does come in the morning. We are dealing with some very severe times, but please do not ever, ever entertain taking your life. 
because ultimately this is the goal of the demonic realm. This is the goal of the Luciferian doctrine, that for everyone that through their acts of evil that does such a thing, they literally get uh, a feather in their cap, they get uh, another spiritual uh, brownie button. It's a very bizarre world that most of us cannot understand, but it is, believe me, do not take part, part in that. Also, those people who are just simply confused that that in itself brings hopelessness because there doesn't seem to be any rational. When you cannot make sense of something, when something does not make sense, it doesn't make sense. And in that, you literally can drive yourself crazy going around and around and around. Okay? So understand that regardless of the situation, that God is always in control, and now is the time for all good men and women to come to the aid of their faith. What do I mean by that? I'm meaning that it's time to turn to the comforter, to the healer, the redeemer, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other action that can be used. Believe me, I know myself. And so, again, if you're in that situation, just understand that this isn't God's fault. That's another thing. Do not blame God for this. Okay, that's another tactic of the enemy to put you in bondage, to keep you from, you know, offering forgiveness, from, from understanding that you truly are in a war. You may be under a curse, okay? There were laws laid down from day one, and there's a, a implementation. There is an order of things. God is a God of order, not a God of disorder. And so one of the um, applications to bring people back into God's will, that when we see in the book of Enoch that the disembodied spirits from those creatures, those giants, those horrible things that were made from the offspring, the fallen angels coming into the daughters of men, that a certain percentage was allowed to remain in, in, on the earth. The others were bound in hell right now to be released in the Revelation. That in that percentage was a form of punishment, which would be a form of torture, because we also see in Corinthians that when a man had his father's wife, turn him over to Satan for a time, which means torment, torture, then in hopes that his soul will be saved, be that through repentance. So, Understand that that is the order of things. Okay? So, what does this do? Well, it can put us into isolation. Okay? We can betray one another. We can reject one another. Because we can literally blame each other for something that is actually demonic or that we, in ourselves with sins and those things of curses, and we can end up casting away those who should who who should be in our lives and should be there for supporting now many of you are rejected many of you are betrayed many of you are abandoned and in that is a type of abuse that is a form of torture all right so now let's let's look at gang stalking in itself now gang stalking in itself is a form of tur- torture it is a mental abuse and in, your, in the mental abuse, that everything that I've mentioned that can be as um, a pain uh, is, is the end result. So gang stalking is torture. And again, since there are supposedly universal laws against such thing, why is this continuing? Okay. Now in that gang stalking, the victims can hear voices, sounds, being told to do things they don't want to do, that literally can drive a person into a, a frenzy. Even being violated, violated in many ways. Okay, it is a violation. But we also need to understand that the demonic can violate as well. We have incubus, succubus, we have perversion demons, we have puthon, python demons that do restriction. Uh, think you you may dream you may be in your bed and and you've got something that literally is on your chest and it's not just a dream because you see many dreams that I'm hearing from people right now are so real that when they wake up they virtually believe that it did happen and in reality it did happen. Do you understand that, that there's a separation of the spirit realm that you're taken into like astral projection? 
that many of those who who believe they were taken on to uh, UFOs, dealt with the greys, dealt with, with other types of beings, that in reality what you're doing, you were taken into another dimension. Okay? And it's all demonic. It's all a violation against God's people. So please, in the name of God, the name of Jesus Christ, do not give up. Do not give up, even though we are in a torture chamber called America. Now, what do we do? Okay, again, well, we talked about turning to God. We, we talked about turning to Jesus Christ. But you see, when we see in the Old Testament, when we see in Scripture, that there was a point in time that the people came together as one and cried out to the Most High God. There was a, an implementation of corporation, people coming together as one, two or more are gathered. And in that, then God shows up, his warring angels come in. And see, with the separation, with the fragmentation of the so-called church, with them not doing deliverance, with allowing people to continue in their curses, to be demonized, even possessed, that there is no opposition to evil. This is actually a very masterful plan that has been in action for a very long time, and I need to, you to understand that the very church you've been going to is a part of this. I know this for a fact because I have tried for a long time to bring deliverance in, and I've, as I mentioned before, I've had everything done to me to keep that. I've had witches' covens move into Bible studies to... Uh, to remove me, okay? So these are supposed to be my brothers and sisters in Christ that I'm ministering to, that I'm sharing the word with, that I'm learning in the word in these Bible studies, and yet they are my own assassins. They literally are gang stalkers. They are literally are a torture. To reject the word of God, to not implement the very commandments of Jesus Christ, tells me whose side they're really on. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you need to come to the understanding in these last days that you need to address yourself, you need to look at yourself, you need to see where you are emotionally, physically, spiritually, to see whether you truly are in Christ, that you really have received, that you are not a counterfeit, you are not uh, a false convert. There must be a spiritual change. There must be an understanding of who you are. Because when you know who you are, you are a mighty warrior to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been doing this a very long time. And I can assure you that even though there has been a great deal of things that have tried to keep me from doing this, and though there has been some success to a point, that after these years, as we move into the elections, as we move into the end times, I'm still here. So I want to be a testimony to you. I want to be an example. I want to be an inspiration to you to clench your fist and shake it at the devil and say, devil, no more. Demons, no more. Reptilians, no more. Illuminati, no more. For I am a child of God bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of sound mind. And I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is a salvation for everyone who believes. So I want you to understand that regardless of what is being done here, there is a table being prepared before our enemies. And God is there. Jesus is there for those who are in Christ Jesus. So let's take back what the enemy has stolen. Now, I don't know if we're, if we're going to be doing a show tomorrow night. As I mentioned, I'm doing some rearranging here taking some time off, trying to deal with some things. I, too, am targeted. I, too, am a TI. And it's getting old. And I'm not giving up. I've been doing this too long. So I want you to know that we're all in this together. It doesn't matter whether you're an atheist. It doesn't matter whether you are, you know, coming out of the occult. Okay? God loves you. And again, this is being done to all of this. And this is no time for God's people in all forms to be separated. Because I assure you that if they succeed, they're going after your kids. So don't let that happen.
are listening to the all-new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Visit our website at www.oneblueraven.weebly.com. Often duplicated, but never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network. That's the Blue Raven Network. Often duplicated, never replicated. You're listening to the all new KBLU Radio Network. Blue Raven Network.